Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Roadmaster base plate on a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Now this is going to be available in two different configurations. You're going to have your direct connect style or you will have a cross brace style. Now keep in mind this is sold separately so if you are planning on doing the crossbar you are going to have to pick this up uh, but we do have this available here at eTrailer. Now when flat towing a vehicle, there's going to be five main components that are going to be required to tow. And the first one we have is our base plate. The next thing that we'll need is a tow bar and that's going to create the connection to these arms to the hitch on the RV. You're also going to have your safety cables. So we have the loops here. You're going to want to pick up those cables or a tow bar that has them included. You're also going to need to pick up some diode wiring to tie into your taillights. That way you can let the people behind you know when you're using the brakes, have your running lights on or using the turn signals. And those are just going to transmit via an umbilical from the seven pole on the RV to the six pole on the towed vehicle. You're also going to have a braking system, which is going to allow the vehicle behind the RV to slow and stop as you do in the RV. And that way it's not pushing or pulling behind. There's also going to be an accidental disconnect uh, breakaway switch. So if the vehicle was to fail and break away from all the safety uh, precautions like the safety cables, it's going to pull that pin and put the brakes on the vehicle. And that way it's not just rolling down the highway. So here we have our removable arms, whereas your crossbar is going to directly connect to it. Uh, but these are really nice. I like the removable arms because these just kind of snap into place with just a twist. And when they're not in place, they actually look really clean on the front of the Jeep. Now you can see when you are ready to hook up to your flat toe setup, your tow bar is going to attach to these arms. You also have these safety chain loops here that protrude through the grill, making it nice and easy to get your safety cables on there. Another nice feature is that you do have these little brackets here for if you were to put your diode wiring on, you'll be able to mount your bracket. Now, our customer today opted not to do that, but yours is gonna live right here and it's gonna make it really easy to get your six pole mounted up with some self-tapping screws. Now, as far as the installation goes on this base plate, there's no real drilling required. You are gonna have to trim on your grill to get all your components to match up through there, um, which can take a little bit of time. And this isn't the easiest fascia to get off. Jeep just kind of put a little bit of extra fasteners. Um, so it might take a little bit and uh, to get the fascia off. But once you have that off, the installation of the base plate on the vehicle is actually pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna walk you through every single step so that way you can get your base plate installed. So follow along and uh, we'll take this into the garage. Now our base plate is going to live right about here so we are going to have to take the fascia off and to begin that we're going to start by removing some plastic fasteners now throughout this whole installation i highly suggest having a nice spot to have all your fasteners and things you take off organized it's going to make it that much easier when you put it all back together this plastic radiator shroud needs to come off and we have six on each side plastic push pins you can see Right here, there's also this one here. So to get these popped off, it's pretty simple. You'll see the groove there, and you're just gonna want to use a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver to kind of pry the center up. Once you have that center up, you can generally pull them out. Um, if this separates, no big deal, but you are gonna need to kind of pry underneath the bottom here to get the whole plug out. And then you're just going to continue by removing the six here as well as the six on this side. Now we can go ahead and remove this cover and that's going to expose the 10 millimeter bolt that we have here. There's also going to be three T40 Torx bits on each side. So we'll go ahead and get these removed as well as the ones on the other side. So now underneath the Jeep, there's going to be eight millimeter fasteners as well as some tens and some plastic clips. So have those handy. And I'll start here just with my eight millimeters and we're just gonna go ahead and get these removed. Now don't forget, there's gonna be an eight millimeter that's tucked up here. We're also gonna get this one in front of the arms. Now this is just gonna kind of hang down. Uh, you can see kind of a line here where that's gonna kind of just droop. So we don't need to worry about these ones back here, um, but we'll go ahead and get our eight millimeters removed. And you can go ahead and do the same on the other side as well. So next we're gonna grab our 10 millimeter socket and on the driver's side, you're gonna have one, two, 
and then three on the passenger. You're just going to have the two here, so we'll go ahead and get those removed. Now the instruction manual doesn't say anything um, about this 13 millimeter, but as I kind of press around, I can tell that these oil covers are just kind of holding in place. This one does seem like it's solid attached to the frame. Uh, it might be for the transmission fluid. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and take this 13 off. I think that's gonna be holding this up a little bit. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and get these plastic uh, fasteners here taken out. So just kind of pry those out. They should just kind of pop it once you put a flat head under there. Now we can go ahead and let our splash shield just kind of hang down. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our wheel wall liners taken out and just kind of following all the way in here, you're gonna have eight millimeter screws that kind of go up here. So just follow those. There's also gonna be two plastic 10 millimeter nuts. There's one that's tucked up here and then there's one that's actually tucked back here. Now, if you're working on the ground, I think the best option here is to uh, put the vehicle in the accessory mode. That way you can turn the wheel out. It's gonna give you a little bit more access to get in there. So this should allow us to get this fender liner kind of pulled out here um, and you'll know pretty quick if you missed any hardware if this is holding on. So just kind of peel this back. So once you peel that back, there's going to be some clips and we're going to be removing this back to a certain portion. The main thing we're looking for is to get to the hardware where the fascia attaches to the front quarter panel. Now just be careful with these. You don't want to peel them back too far. Uh, that can cause damage to the paint and crease it. So just take your time here. Um, I'm gonna try to get this popped out and that way I can show you what the clips look like. Sometimes it helps to have a, uh, this pair of pliers if you can get back here to pinch those clips and that's gonna kinda help you get this popped out here. I'm just gonna kinda work my way up feeling for those clips. So you can kind of see as I peel back, these are those arrowhead clips. So I just kind of press in on them. You also have these clips here. So you might need to put just a little bit of pressure as you kind of work your way up. So just kind of be careful here, obviously. You don't want to scratch your paint, so do this by hand. So you're really just looking to pull this back up to this portion. This clip here actually uh, popped out, which it just slides in. So no big deal there. But once you kind of get to this point, reach up in this portion. There's gonna be a 10 millimeter, it feels like, bolt that's going this way. So we're gonna to need to get that loosened up. Now to make this a little bit easier and keep this away from the body, uh, there's two things you can do. So first I'm gonna put just a paper towel here, uh, something that's not gonna scratch the paint to kind of keep this out. But I'm also gonna put a little bit of painter's tape along uh, my seams just to kind of make sure that we don't scratch as we take off or put our fascia back on. Sometimes that paint against paint can cause it to rub or even against these clips. So I'll get that set up real quick and I'll show you how it looks. So with my tape in place and my paper towel kind of keeping this pressed out, this is gonna make sure that we don't pull this back too far, but again, to kind of keep that clearance away from the fascia. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this 10 millimeter taken out. So now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the front fascia. Now there's probably gonna be some electrical connections, so you don't wanna completely just pull this out. And there is a method to get this off safely. You might wanna have an extra set of hands here, that way you're not dropping your fascia. But what we're gonna do here is kinda of pull out here, and then also kinda of with an upward motion to kinda of get this over the clips, and that way we can get this corner popped off, so. Once you kind of get this corner out, we're just gonna slowly pull this out, working our way towards the middle here. Sometimes it helps to kind of grab on the bottom portion to kind of get this to move. Now this lower portion also might have, uh, might be attached a little bit, so just kind of peel this down to get that loosened up as you work your way towards the middle. Now, depending on your trim, you may or may not have all three of these connections. So there's this large plug, and this was actually attached up here, but if you pop this out, it's gonna make it easier to see the clip. 
because there's a locking mechanism. So you're just gonna pull this back and then you should be able to just kind of press and pull this out. So that's the one large one there. You also have your windshield washer squirter here. So this just, you pinch on these little edges. You can see where the grip is. Pinch that and you should be able to separate it. Now it may shoot some uh, washer fluid at you. And this looks to be like an ambient air temperature sensor, uh, something along those lines. But this, you just push on this tab and that will separate from here. Now there's gonna be two connections also on our driver's side. So let's go take a look at those. Now on our driver's side, this uh, electrical connection here, there's a locking clip. So I'm just gonna pull that tab out and then you should be able to push in and get this separated here. So that's what that one looks like. And then we also have this plug, which should be sh similar to the one that we had on the other side. So locking tab is gonna be underneath um, down here. So I'm gonna pull that out. And if those are tricky, you can sometimes put a flathead screwdriver in there and that will help. But now that we have our electrical connections separated, we can go ahead and set our fascia aside. Now we need to remove this portion of the air dam and this is not gonna get reinstalled. And it's just three plastic push pins and two of them are pretty easy to get to. So middle one here, obviously you can see that. We'll just pry this out. And then your other two, you're gonna have um, one right here. This is pretty easy to get to. And if you need to kind of get a gap in there, what you can actually do is push on the back side of this to kind of give it a little bit of space. And then once you pry underneath it, it should be a little bit easier. And then the one that's up here is actually kind of tricky because it's tucked back here. Um, so you might need to remove this plastic push pin on this top portion, just to kind of get back there. So I'll just kind of pop this one off for now. And that's going to allow me to kind of pry this up a little bit. And plus that plastic tab is not going to be in the way. So again, you can push on the back side to kind of help it along uh, or at least get a gap. And then we're going to pry this out. It's kind of a tight spot to get to, but we'll be able to get this popped off. There we go. And then you can just take this off. And again, this is not getting uh, installed again. So you can do what you want with this, but we'll go ahead and get this out of the way. And you can go ahead and pop this plastic pin back in. And then we're just gonna go ahead and repeat on the other side. So now we'll go ahead and get our bumper beam removed. So there's going to be a 16 millimeter bolt here, as well as up here. You can kind of see that tucked back there. And then this 10 millimeter nut as well. And then our 10, since it's on a stud, what we can do is get this pretty close to uh, off and it should hold the bumper beam in place, but just while we're taking the other side off, this is gonna hold it in place just by having a few threads, that way it's not falling on us. So we'll go ahead and get the other side uh, hardware taken off and then we can go ahead and get this removed. So with our hardware taken off, this just slides out. This is not going to get re, uh, reinstalled, so you can again do whatever you want with this, but hold on to the hardware as we're going to be using that for our base plate. So now we need to trim this portion here, and you can see I used a tape, a painter's tape here to just kind of mark that out to make it a little bit easier to see and get some nice clean lines. And this is just going to make way for the, our base plate to sit in here. Now this is a kind of rubbery here, but it goes into a plastic. So using shears cuts through the rubber pretty quickly. And then all of a sudden you'll feel it kind of get a little bit tighter as we get to the plastic. Um, so you might have a little trouble on that portion, but what I ended up doing, I'll show you with a uh, razor blade and get this cut back first. The plastic is going to get a little bit tricky uh, to make that cut. So what I did is I took uh, just a fresh blade here and just kind of worked my way down, making a nice score mark along the tape. And if you run the blade over it a few times, it's going to create like a nice little perforation. And that way, once we cut this top off, you can kind of just bend this back and it'll be nice and clean. And if you need to, you can run your utility knife right down the seam that it's created. And that's going to make it a nice clean cut. Then you're just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. 
So now we're going to go ahead and create a mounting point for our base plate to mount up to, and that's going to be accomplished by using this long bolt. We also have our large washer as well as a split washer here. And we're going to go to this portion where we have a hole passing through the back all the way up to the front. And we're going to kind of just, this might be a little bit tricky to feed this through, but we're just going to go ahead and get this fed through to where the stud should come out and we'll have some threads exposed. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead real quick and put some red Loctite on here. And any of the hardware that we're putting on, we're gonna wanna put a little bit of Loctite on here. It's just gonna hold this in long term. Now we're gonna grab this portion and this is going to just space this out to where we can mount up our hardware onto the base plate. So we're gonna just go ahead and thread this on rotating the bolt here on the back side to kind of get this started. And then we're going to kind of just snug this down. I've just gone ahead and put a wrench on that uh, head of the bolt just so we can kind of thread this on by hand. We're going to try to get this uh, kind of aligned here. You can see this little notch out portion where it's going to sit. So that's kind of where it's going to rest. Um, but I'm going to leave this I don't want to completely tighten it down yet. Um, I want to make sure that all of our holes align. So just kind of get it to a point where you can still move this around a little bit, but at least this will hold itself up here. Uh, we can go ahead and repeat on the other side. So now you're going to want to have your new hardware accessible with your split washer and also those factory bolts that we used here for the bumper beam. And we're going to go ahead and get our base plate lifted up now there are gonna be these studs, so that's gonna kinda of hold it up for us, but if you need to grab an extra set of hands to get this in place, go ahead and do that. And then once we kind of get this aligned here, we're gonna go ahead and take our new hardware, and then since this is loose, we can kind of align that up. We can also get our factory bolts in place here, putting Loctite on all of them. And I'm just gonna kinda of get these hand tightened on, that way it's all holding itself up. So go ahead and get all of your hardware in place. So we're gonna go ahead and get these two tightened down first. Um, and kind of what I'm using as a gauge here is I'm gonna try to get this uh, little stud here that where we had those 10 millimeters kind of in the center there. So you may have to lift up on the base plate and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these 16s down. And those will be the first hardware that we attack. Go ahead and get the other ones on the other side tightened down. And then we're going to tighten these down. Um, there are torque settings in the instruction manual, so I'll come back with my torque wrench to get them proper. Um, and then we'll just repeat on both sides. So now we're gonna go ahead and get these tightened down. These are gonna be three quarter inch. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the back ones to cinch this up. And we're gonna kinda just keep this in the channel and try to keep this as level as possible. So you can actually use these corrugations as a kind of a base to keep this level. So now I'm gonna go back with my torque wrench and you may have to put uh, a wrench on the back side here. And the torque settings are gonna be found in the instruction manual. Now, if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store, um, but this is gonna make sure that these are gonna be tight enough, uh, but also it's not gonna be too tight putting stress on the threads or potentially breaking them. We'll also torque the back side as well. We're also going to torque down our factory bolts as well. We're also going to take a little bit of that thread lock here and place this on this little thread. And we'll go ahead and put this 10 millimeter nut back on. And go ahead and tighten that down. 
Now we're just gonna go ahead and repeat all the same process on the other side. Now it may help to kind of uh, make sure everything's snug, obviously, before torquing it down on each side. That way it's nice and pressed against exactly where it needs to be. Now at this point, our base plate is installed. So what I generally recommend is if you're doing the rest of your flat toe components at this time is to leave that fascia off. And that's gonna make it a lot easier to route all your electrical wires or any of your fittings or airlines that you need to. Um, and it's gonna be a lot easier to route those and make it look clean before getting that fascia on. Now our customer today has opted not to do wiring, which is fine, but we are not gonna be cutting out for the wiring at this portion. So I'm gonna get my fascia kind of mocked up here and that way I can see exactly where I'm gonna trim out. Uh, so it'll just be here and where our safety chain loops are for now. Yours will probably have an opening here for your six pole diode wiring. I'm going to just kind of go ahead and get our uh, fascia kind of put back on, just kind of mocking up purposes. So uh, as long as we kind of get this slipped over these little uh, bumpers up top, we should be able to kind of align this here and that's going to hold it in place. So this bumper fascia is going to tuck in a little bit more, but you can see where our clearance issues are going to be. So I have a chalk marker here and this is just a nice way to uh, give myself a nice little clean look of where I need to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my marks here. And then as far as cutting goes, you can use a Dremel or something along those lines, but honestly, if you just have a pair of snips, uh, you can go ahead and cut those and then file them down to make them clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my safety chain loops first, and that way this will kind of press in a little bit more, and then we'll have a perfect shot for where our removable arms will go. So I'll go ahead and just snip this top portion here and then here and then along this bottom it's actually solid um, but I just kind of went ahead and made a cut here and then on the other side and then I could kind of start to twist this and I'm going to leave a bit of extra plastic down here because I can go ahead and file that off to make it look a little bit cleaner um, but we'll get this portion taken off and this is going to at least uh, get this to kind of sync up and that way we can get this a little bit cleaner looking. I've gone ahead and done the other side, uh, but you can see once we get this thing off, this is going to kind of cinch up a little bit better. Now with this kind of pushed back a little bit, it's going to give us a better idea of where the receptacles for our removable arms are. Now you might want to take the corner of the fascia and just kind of tuck it up, pretty much kind of get it back into the shape of it uh, mounted up. That way you know for sure that this is exactly where you want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my marks. So we can always cut more and find out where it's rubbing to kind of keep the cleanest look possible. But uh, so I'm going to go ahead, I'll make the cuts that I know I need to make. And then once we do that on both sides, we should be able to kind of slip this over and uh, do some fine tuning before taking this off and kind of filing all of our cuts down. Now you may need to use a cutting device, so I'm going to just use my oscillating tool here, that way I get a nice clean cut. So I've gone ahead and made sure that I can kind of snap in the sides there, that way I know this is pressed up um, without having to actually bolt all this up, and I've made all my cuts. Now I need to go back and file all these down so they look a little bit cleaner, um, but also we need to make sure that we plug in all of the harnesses and um, the squirters that we detach from the bumper. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this off, sand these all down, and then just revert, pretty much put our fascia back in in the reverse order that we took it off. Now with everything back in place, all that's left to do is hook up the rest of your flat toe components, and then you're ready to hit the road. And that was a look and installation of the Roadmaster base plate for a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L.